Hi everyone and welcome to this video which we are going to talk about the limit and specifically um, limits when they don't exist. In addition, we'll talk about some limit properties. So just a little reminder about the definition of a limit. Um, if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a specific value, we can say that the limit approaches the specific value of L. So we can see that written here. Um, so that's fairly straightforward until we run into situations where the graph may not be doing um, these traditional items where it's approaching a specific value. So what we're going to focus on here is this idea that what if it doesn't approach something specific? Um, what we typically will identify this as does not exist or use the abbreviation DNE, which is an acceptable abbreviation for the AP exam. But there's one little caveat I want to mention about this. Um, while we're going to talk about ways that limits don't exist, sometimes limits will quote unquote not exist, but their values will still approach an infinite or a negative infinite value. And while these, while these by the textbook don't exist because they don't approach a specific number, um, we want to provide that specificity if we are able to. So if a function is approaching infinity or if it's approaching negative infinity, we want to provide that clarity if possible. And we'll see that through examples here in this video. So let's go ahead and let's look at the three main conditions that cause limits that fail to exist. So the first scenario here says f of x approaches a different number from the right side of c than it approaches from the left side of c. These are going to be traditionally your piecewise functions. So these are going to be your piecewise functions. And a quick drawing of this um, to help illustrate this for you will look something like this. So if I had a function, let's just draw the xy axis. I'm going to draw the graph in blue here. So if I had a graph that maybe, I don't know, did something like this. And then it jumps here. And then maybe it does something like that. Um, and let's go ahead and let's say c is right here. Okay. So in this first scenario, notice that from the left-hand side, the limit is approaching this positive y value. I don't have specified, but it's some positive y value. Um, but from the right side, from the positive direction, it's approaching some negative y value. So these arrows that I've drawn are not approaching the same place. And when a limit fails to approach the same number from either side of a particular x value, it is said that this will not exist. So that's the example number one. Um, the second scenario here is that f of x increases or decreases without bound. And this one's really important to take note of because there are three different situations that can happen here. So let's go ahead and let me draw all three of those out for you quickly. So we're going to draw three xy planes. Again, I'm going to draw the graphs in blue. So scenario number one would be maybe a graph that looks does some this kind of pattern here. Here's our value of c. The second scenario maybe would look something like this. Okay. And again, that's the value of c. And then this would be the third scenario. Okay. So in all three of these scenarios, at the x value of c, the function is not approaching a specific value. However, in, in the first drawing that I have for you here, let me draw a green arrow to exemplify this. Both from left side of c and the right side of c, the function is approaching the same, we'll say, concept here. It's pro they're both approaching an infinite, a positive infinite value. So while the function it will not have a finite number that it's going to approach, we would say that this limit would approach positive infinity. In the middle scenario here, both are going down. So they're both approaching a negative infinite value. And so we would want to say that this approach is negative infinity. And then finally, in the third example, on the left side of C, the function is going to a positive infinite value. And to the right-hand side, it's approaching a negative infinite value. In this scenario, there is nothing we can say. Just like the first example, we would only be able to say does not exist. So again, I want to point out that some math textbooks and places that you may come across may say that these first two examples could be, could be interpreted as does not exist because it technically does not approach a finite value. So that's something that should be noted, but we want to try to provide as much specificity as possible. So saying that it's going to pause infinity or negative infinity would be a preferred way for us to answer these two scenarios. So that's the second example here of conditions of which it doesn't exist. And the final example, number three, says f of x oscillates between two fixed values. And one example of this, um, of an oscillating function, would be an excellent example would be a trig function because they are periodic and they seem to create some sort of a pattern. So if I wanted to ask you, for example, what the limit as x approaches infinity was of the sine function, notice that the sine function just continues to go up and down, bounding itself between one and negative one. So as it goes to infinity, 
that green arrow that I'm drawing doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't approach anywhere. And so we're going to go ahead and conclude this that says that the answer does not exist. Here are on the next page are a few additional uh, drawings that can kind of help you see this. So again, on the left-hand side here, this is an example of a piecewise function. As x approaches 1, they are approaching two different values. In the middle scenario, as I mentioned to you before, while it doesn't approach a finite value at x equals 0, this does approach a positive infinite value on both sides. So I would probably go with a better approach of saying that this approach is positive infinity. And then the third example is another example of an oscillating function. At zero, if you were to take this graph and plug it into Desmos, and certainly feel free to pause this video to try that out if you'd like. At zero here, this graph is infinitely oscillating between, it appears to be, uh, I believe, in one and negative one. Um, so feel free to explore that one on Desmos if you'd like. So the second part of this video, we're going to talk about some properties of limits. And so properties of limits basically will allow us to be able to split and divide these limits up into separate pieces if we need to. So a few um, numerical examples I'm going to put up here on the screen to go over with you. So here are some algebraic examples on the right-hand side that I've drawn in for you now. Feel free to pause this now to make sure that you catch up on that. Um, but what this is going to allow me to do is to take individually these two um, functional values and be able to split them up into their own limits. So the summation property allows me to say the limit as x approaches 3 of just sine of x, and then I can add separately the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared. This is going to work the same in the subtraction property, except all I'm going to so now change this is make this a subtraction sign instead. You'll learn when you go over algebraic properties that these, this particular example you're looking at, there's no need to use this property. But this could be helpful as we move into more difficult limits um, when we get to the algebraic evaluation of these limits. So you can see for these first three, all I'm simply able to do is take the product um, of two limits and be able to separate them into separate limits. Same thing with subtraction, same thing with addition. And then actually down here, the quotient rule as well. Um, so this is going to allow me to be able to say the limit as x approaches 3 of sine of x, all divided by the limit is x approaches 3 of x squared. So we can separate these out. One other property that can be very helpful here is if there is a GCF inside of a limit that you can essentially factor it out. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor the 5 out, and now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the limit as x squared minus 5x minus 6. So these algebraic properties can be super helpful, especially when you're working with piecewise functions or if you're working with different functions being added or subtracted together. And you'll see some examples of these going forth um, in future lessons. So for the final portion of this video, we're going to try a few graphic, graphic limit questions here. And what I'm going to ask you to do for each of these is to pause the video to try out the questions on the screen. And then after a few moments, uh, the answers will all pop up on screen. So let's go ahead and try this very first example. Go ahead and pause. Okay, so here are my answers, and I have them color-coded for you so you can look up in the graph. So, for example, the limit as x approaches negative 3 on the left-hand side, it's going towards the y value of 2. On the right side, it's also going towards the y value of 2, since those arrows are meeting the limit is said to exist. The limit will also exist at 0, as seen here in green. It will be uh, exist here in red. Remember, a limit is about what a function approaches, not what it actually equals. So while there is a hole here at y equals 2, the function is approaching to from the right and from the left, so in this situation, it's going to exist. However, if you see here in this orange example, at x equals 2, the function is approaching the y value of 2 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, it's approaching the y value of 1. Since these arrows are not meeting in the same place, this would be does not exist. One little follow-up question before we scroll to the next question would be, where else on this function does the limit not exist? Where else on this function does the limit not exist? And the answer to that would be x equals 4. Because on the left-hand side, the function is going up to a positive infinite value. And on the right-hand side, it is going to a negative infinite value. So even though um, these are approaching infinite values, because they're approaching different infinite values, no matter what, the solution here would be does not exist. Here's another quick example. The limit is x approaches 0. So again, what I like to do is usually use my arrows here to just show on the left-hand side what it's doing. 
on the right hand side what it's doing and it looks like it's approaching the same value so that's a one two three it looks like it's approaching negative four in this scenario negative four in this scenario another follow-up where would the limit not exist on this question the limit would not exist right here as highlighted in blue so that's one two three looks like x equals four keep in mind that this value right here which would be x equals negative three this limit would exist this limit would exist just because there's a hole the function is approaching the same value from the left and the right hand side and here's an opportunity just to help um, illustrate that example here as you can see the limit is x approaches negative three from the left hand side the limit is x approaches three from the positive side so in both of those scenarios it seems to be approaching uh, the y value of four and the y value of four since they're approaching the same number from both sides, we can say the limit does indeed exist at four. So that little negative tells you left-hand side, the positive tells you coming from the right-hand side. And then just as I mentioned before here, four from the positive side, that's gonna be coming from the right-hand side. It looks like it's approaching a Y value of negative two. From the left-hand side, or from the negative side, it's approaching a Y value of positive two, since these numbers do not match, it is going to be said that the limit does not exist here. The limit does not exist. Final example in this video talks about um, finding limits as they approach infinity. So we can look at the end behavior of a function. So that's exactly what this is evaluating. Limits at infinity are looking at end behavior. What does it do when it leaves our graph screen? What does it do? What pattern does it have when it leaves? So when we look at positive infinity, we're going in the right direction forever. Now, we can assume, unless more information is given to us, that the function is going to consider the same pattern that it is showing you when it leaves the screen. As in this scenario, this looks like a linear function. It's going to consider that linear function forever off the screen. It means it is going upward. Its y values will continue to increase without bound. So we would say the limit as x approaches infinity is going to be infinity. Once again, it can be interpreted by some textbooks and some of the resources that this would not exist because it's not actually approaching an, a, a finite number. Um, but this further clarification of saying infinity gives us more information than writing DNA, hence the reason why I would like to do that. Um, on the last one here, x approaches negative infinity. So as it's going here to the right-hand side, as denoted with my orange pen here, it looks like it's gonna remain a horizontal line as it moves on. So we can say that it's not gonna increase without bound, it's not going to decrease without bound either. Rather, it's going to just continue to remain going to the left as it is. So that is a y value of 4, 5, 6. It looks like a y value of 7 here, a y value of 7. So that will conclude this video. Please feel free to pause, rewind, and go back to any other explanations that I've had in this video. Um, but that will conclude looking at uh, graphics limit, limits graphically as well as some additional property of limits. Thank you for watching.